What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to check out Space Haven because it's been almost a year and a half since the last time we checked the game out. For those of you that haven't seen Space Haven before, this is one of those titles that's a colony management, colony survival game uh, that is set in space, actually, in a procedural galaxy. And really, it's RimWorld, except that you are building your own spaceship with cannons and shields and all that kind of stuff as you go along. Uh, because this one has a bit of an on-ramp when it comes to the tutorialization of the game and, like, learning how to play it, I went ahead and I started it off by myself, and we kind of just skipped the title card and everything else. And we're going to dive into some gameplay that's probably about two or three hours into the game because I was taking a look at my old videos and I realized that I've showed you guys the opening salvo of the game multiple times now, and so I'd really prefer to put a video out that's got a little bit more advanced gameplay. It's got some more interesting stuff going on. It allows you to actually see the flow of the game as you play. And so here we are. If after watching this you wanted to check out the early access of Space Haven, you're more than welcome to do that. You can take a look down below in the description and I will have a link for you. Uh, the game does have a big update coming soon as well. And so what you're seeing right now may not be representative of what will be in the game like a year from now. On top of that, you can also take a look at my Twitch stream and my Discord. Those links are down there in the bottom. Uh, but, you know, not mandatory. Nothing, nothing too important. Let's dive on into some Space Haven because we've got limited time to play around with. So as of right now, I have the HSS Leda, apparently. That's the name of my ship. I don't know. I didn't even realize that was the name of my ship until just now. I think we should probably go through the UI first and kind of talk about what the game is and what the game isn't before we get too much further on into it because there's kind of a lot of groundwork that we need to cover before you're going to like understand what's going on with the game. And so let me take you on like a brief tour through my base and what I've built so far so that you can get a feel for what is happening inside this spacecraft. So, let's go from the front of the ship to the back, and then after that we'll talk about the UI, and then we'll actually do some gameplay, because I tried to park this thing before I saved, before I did the video. I tried to park it in a system that was interesting, where there's a derelict for us to salvage. And so a big chunk of this game is that it's actually post-apocalyptic. It's not a readily apparent right now what happened to the galaxy, but apparently the galaxy has gone through its apocalypse, and we are very, very alone flying through space, and we're sort of salvaging through the dead ruins, of ships that preceded us in order to survive. And there are things on those ships a la Space Hulk that probably could be best left under undiscovered, but along the way you'll find data logs and resources and stuff like that. And that's good because we're really low on resources right now. I don't actually have the things I need to complete my day-to-day -day operations. So, from the front of the ship to the back. Up here, we have a operations console. This is how I hail other ships. I have a navigation console. This is how we jump on out to the system map right here. And then it'll allow us to kind of like navigate in between points that are preset in this area. As you can see, I'm about five systems out from where I started. I didn't go to this system over here because there was other ships inside of it. And I really didn't need to trade or do anything right now. And so like I didn't want to bump into other ships on the off chance that they're hostile. They're not hostile as far as I know. I think you can actually, like, click on the system. Yeah, they're from the Merchant Federation. And so they're not hostile, but that having been said, still didn't really need them at the moment. We're inside this little system right here. It's got water, it's got carbon, and it's got a derelict inside of it. Everything in this game is tooltipped fairly well so that you know what you're looking for. We'll go back to the main game here. This right here is my kitchen. It cooks meals. It's the exact same thing as the grill from RimWorld. Up here, we've got the research lab. Once again, exact same thing as a research table. Over here, I had to make like a little secluded area where people could sleep at because the noise of the machinery makes them upset. So this is kind of like our community bedroom for right now. We've got a toilet over here. It's right in the middle of the workshop. I really haven't had a chance to sequester and put it somewhere else. And I didn't really have the resources to expand the hull any further. And so it has just kind of stayed where it's at. Although I would say that moving it probably not a terrible idea if we've got like a better spot to put it over here where it'll be closer to the bedroom. Typically they have like their, their peeps and poops sometime around the time they go to bed. So I'll move that over there real fast. Everything in this game can be freely moved. It doesn't cost you anything to rearrange your base. Uh, it's basically just they have to go pick it up, break it down, bring it back over here, and then you're good. These right here 
are pods. Uh, these pods are used for mining. These pods are used for salvaging. They're basically the little circular things. Like, you ever see Guardians of the Galaxy? They're the little circular pod things that they use to mine the brain material out of the giant titan. This right here is an algae dispenser. Uh, the algae dispenser is basically our backup food supply in the off chance that we run out of food, which actually is not an off chance. It's definitely going to happen uh, because I haven't really got my grow operation up and running to be self-sufficient just yet. Uh, right here we have a power conduit. They've actually redone the power system in this game. So like the last time you saw me play this game, you actually had to run wiring and you had to like put it in the walls and you had to connect it to kind of like power, like power monitoring devices and you had to have like surge protectors and all kinds of stuff. I'm exaggerating. You didn't need surge protectors. There's no brownouts in space. But that having been said, they have redone the power system. It's a lot simpler now. You put down these nodes and they provide power to everything inside of their radius. And they are just assumed to have been wired into the reactor, basically. And honestly, I think that was a really, really good change. The power system in this game was always a little bit fiddly. And so, like, I like the new system a lot better. Over here, we have our tools facility. It builds tools. That's exactly what it does. This is a water purifier. It takes ice and converts it into drinkable water or potable water that we can use for watering our plants. This guy right here is a hole stabilizer. The hole stabilizer is a little bit more complicated. Basically, you can't initiate a warp in any ship that doesn't have the hole stabilized. And this thing literally is just a node that you put in the base that signifies that it's been stabilized for warp travel. And then it provides you with system points right here that you can spend on very specific things like thrusters that use up uh, systems capacity. We also have a gas scrubber. This gets rid of CO2 and smoke and hazardous gases and poisons and things like that and converts it into oxygen. That's just a light bulb. This right here is a heater. Uh, basically, it's a heater AC combo that makes sure that the temperature is fine inside of here. This is our grow operation where my food is coming from at the moment. This is storage. This is our away team shuttle. They haven't put planets or anything in the game yet, but you can use this. And in fact, we will be using this during the course of this episode to go ahead and board that derelict that's down to the left. We've got an airlock right here. There's another temperature regulator right there just to make sure that everything's okay. I don't know why it says the current temperature is minus 460 Fahrenheit. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it says that. That's a little weird. I assume that that's just a display bug uh, because from reading right here, it says that the temperature is 74 Fahrenheit, which is totally fine. A little bit hotter than I prefer. I normally prefer that my house be right about 72 degrees at all times, but, you know, 74 is workable. It's manageable. Uh, one of the byproducts of doing farming on my ship is that it produces a lot of steam. Uh, so basically, this thing blows fat vape clouds all over the ship, and you've got to have a you've got to have a you've got to have an air scrubber in order to get rid of the vapor. Otherwise, it causes your machines to break down. And so I've got a water collector right here. What it'll do is it sucks up that water vapor and it converts it back into potable water, which is nice because we're actually doing a little bit of recycling. This is the reactor right here. Uh, if that goes down, bad things transpire. This right here is the first part of our industrial processing. It's called a recycler. It basically takes the blocks that we're going to be stripping off of this ship and converts them into usable parts. We've got the thrusters back here, and that's pretty much the tour of my ship for right now. There's not a whole lot more to explain. Uh, the UI, we've got our inventory. We have various buttons that do various things. I'll try to call them out as we use them. We've got our crew members right here. They've got their health, they've got their energy, and they've got their air is the bottom meter. And then, of course, these guys all have differentiating skill sets. They're good at things. They're bad at things. They have moodles, just like in RimWorld. They can't have mental breaks and freak out. It's actually pretty bad when they do that because you're in space. So, obviously, being a pyromaniac on the ground is a lot less risky than a pyromaniac inside an enclosed capsule full of oxygen. Uh, we also have their personal inventory, which is very XCOM-inspired. And uh, they've got, like, a little gun just in case we send them on an away mission. And so on and so forth. Uh, over here, we've got the resources that are available inside the area, the time of day. This is our speed meter over here so we can determine how fast the game plays. And then, of course, we've got our building menus, our ship editor. We've got the wall displays that we can fiddle with. We've got the whole view right here. Our ship is not pretty. It really sincerely is not a gorgeous, beautiful vehicle. But it works, okay? It keeps the void outside, and that's all you can ask for. Uh, we've also got power control so that we can reroute things. We don't really have weapons or shields right now because we're still kind of in the early game. So no biggie, but what we need to do right now, now that I've kind of explained the game to you, is we need to go and we need to get ourselves some goodies off this ship. 
The downside to that is that I've got to clear this ship of all hostiles, which is where it's going to kind of get sketchy. Now, it is important to note that if you find a reasonably awesome ship out in space, uh, you can claim it and add it to your fleet, and it will jump in, but then your fuel usage is going to go up, and then, of course, like it costs a lot more in overhead. And so I tend to make like one big, mega-awesome super ship. I'm going to build this thing like a pontoon. Basically, I'm going to mirror this side over to here and then connect it with two corridors. And basically, it's going to be kind of like a flying pontoon waffle, I, I think is what I'm kind of going for aesthetically. I haven't fully rounded out the front of the hole right here yet, and I haven't rounded out the sides and everything, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, we need to find our draftee, so let's go ahead and take Nana. He's our main marine guy. We'll go ahead and draft him, and I'm going to tell him to head on over here and put on a spacesuit. And so hopefully he will do just that. As you can see, he's whipped out his blicky, and he's heading on over to this area. The game is wonderfully animated. I can't remember, but I feel like they've updated... I feel like they've updated the sprites. Like, the sprites look a lot tighter, and they look a lot cleaner to me right now. But it's been so long since I played the game last that I don't know if I'm right or not. Uh, we will load him inside the Rock Crusher, and then we need to command the Rock Crusher to land over here somewhere. We can land in the airlock, or we can go in through this breach... I would recommend going in through the breach, because if there's aliens over here, we can kind of like float out here in the void and fire guns at them without putting ourselves at risk. If we go through the airlock, it takes a second to activate it, and so they might be waiting all around the door right there, and they might jump us the second we go on in, and I'd rather not take any casualties right now. I'd really prefer not to. Okay, so we've made landfall with our little shuttle. Let's see how bad it is. Sometimes you get onto these ships and nothing bad happens. Sometimes you come out to these ships and it's just an unholy mess of chittering teeth and scampering claws and you never quite know. As soon as they're docked, we can let Clint out and let's do some scouting. In order to properly scout this ship, we have to see every single fog of war gone. And so let's just take it slow. I'm going to open up this bulkhead right here just to get that out of the way. We're going to carry on this way. We do want to keep a special eye on our oxygen for right now, lest anything go wrong. We haven't seen any bugs or any pirates. So, like, in my opinion, we're kind of off to a good start here. It could definitely be a lot worse. However, the ship is so large that if there's anything squirreled away inside these rooms, there's a solid chance that Clint's not going to make it because he's got a long way back to the shuttle. The ship actually seems to be reasonably intact. Usually these things are like explosive decompressioned all over the place. But this place is in decent shape. The game does really capture the atmosphere of going onto like a ship and being like unsure of what's going to be there. Like it definitely gives me Space Hulk vibes when I'm crawling around some of these destroyed ships. It gets a little bit creepy. Why is there a door right there? That's a weird spot for a door. Alright, so we found their thrusters. That right there, I think, is a power plant, I think? I don't know. So far, no lootables. Nothing that we can steal from the carcass. Sometimes there's, like, crates and treasure chests around that'll give you money or guns or other things like that. Unfortunately, no such luck so far. It took us about half our oxygen to get over here, so once his oxygen gets within the realm of half, I'm going to try to send him back to the shuttle so he doesn't suffocate. Hypoxia is a bad thing. We tend to... I, I tend to prefer to keep this entire situation low -poxic. Uh Let's go ahead and send him back real quick. Hopefully he doesn't run into aliens on this side. He will do a little bit of scouting on the way back. And it looks like this derelict actually may not have any enemies on it, which is incredibly fortuitous for us. Uh, normally, it is a considerable experience clearing out all the aliens and killing everything that's on a ship. It takes a long time. And so we may have just saved ourselves a ton of productivity and not having to clear this place out. All right, so I think the last couple places we haven't been are like over here near the navigations console. Let's get after that. It does look like they've got a farming situation set up. Yeah, we've basically searched the entire thing and nothing bad has happened. So what's going to happen here is if you double click on this ship like anywhere on the floor plan or you click on this, it's going to bring up the salvage menu. And this is a major mechanic in this game. I can't stress enough that being self-sufficient and producing all your own food and all your own water and all your own gear, that is a long-term pipe dream in this game. This is not RimWorld. 
You're supposed to be trading, you're supposed to be bartering, you're supposed to be stealing, you're supposed to be robbing and salvaging. Like, really, by any means necessary, you're trying to keep your ship in the air. Uh, you know, like, mora or mor morals be damned. And so, like, in RimWorld, uh, it's very, very easy to be self-sufficient on food if you're playing on, like, a default jungle or, like, forest map. Uh, it it's very, very easy to grow a ton of rice and freeze it and be good to go. This game, not as easy in that regard. Uh, food doesn't spoil, but food is very rare and hard to get your hands on. Now, on this ship, we've got a number of items. I always like to go through these first before I decide what else I'm going to do. It looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of Hyperium. That's warp fuel. Uh, it looks like we've actually got hyper fuel itself, too, which is incredibly valuable. We've got a whole block. We've got energy blocks. We've got space food, which is great because I'm going to need something to feed my guys while they're working and breaking this place down because it's going to be like a three or four day effort to tear this ship apart. And then we also got a electronics component. I'm going to go ahead and select all and we're going to tell them to bring it all aboard because we need those meals right there. That's a day and a half's worth of food. And then on top of that, we've also got a whole lot of scrapping to do. But I'm going to wait to do the scrapping. I think until we've got all the regular items torn out. However, I would say that this is a really, really good candidate for a ship to reclaim. It's got a lot of floor space. It's got a lot of, like, accompaniment. It's got a lot of goodies. But I personally, I like to build my own custom ship. I almost never take ships that I find floating out in space. Uh, I like to just, like, reappropriate their walls and build them onto mine and be create, like, a giant spaghetti monster of doom. And so that's what I think I'm going to do. We're going to undraft him real fast, and then we also need to undraft the shuttle. And they should get to work. And what you will see is that we've got one person researching over here on the bench. We've got Saffron. We've got Kaiden. By the way, this game is full of pop culture references. If you're into Firefly or Battlestar Galactica or Star Trek or anything else, the character naming schemes, the ship names, uh, virtually a, a huge amount of it is sourced from, like, sci-fi material. I'm going to go ahead and let them salvage for a minute, and then we'll come back after, actually, probably what is going to be a beefy cut. Okay, so they've gotten everything off the ship that's like a material item that was just laying around. Now we need to get to the nitty gritty, which is salvaging this bad boy. So, I'm going to queue up everything for salvage because I'm kind of at a point right now. Everything in this game is broken down into blocks. So basically, whole blocks are exactly what they sound like. Use them to expand the ship. You've got tech blo or infra blocks. Those are used for things like doors, windows, walls, basic workbenches. Uh, you've got tech blocks. Tech blocks are used for basically high-level assemblers and things of that nature. This game does have kind of like a resource production flow to it, I guess. Like, you you know, you craft one thing to make it into the next thing to make it into the next thing, and so there's a little bit of a Factorio vibe to the game, although not quite as nitty-gritty. Uh, we also have energy blocks. Those are used for building reactors, and those are built for doing, like, uh, power conduits, things of that nature. Soft blocks are used for furniture, uh, so the soft blocks are almost universally for making things like couches, beds, toilets, stuff like that. And so anyways, that's why you need all that stuff. And so tearing apart this ship is going to be really, really important for our long-term viability. As you can see, the shuttle came back, and they've dropped off all the goodies right here. Uh, those six space foods are going to be really helpful, in fact. They're going to be incredibly helpful because I was low on food. We do have a harvest that's about to come in, and I would very much like to add another farm but I just can't do it until I expand the whole size. Like, I just don't think that it's going to be feasible. Like, I, I really, really, really need to get kind of the, the TIE Fighter design of this thing that I'm trying to get done. So there's going to be a hallway and a hallway, and there's going to be a central tube. The central tube is going to be the cargo bay, and it's going to have the shuttle launch, and it's going to have the pod launches, and it's going to have the bridge. This over here is going to be like the general farming, living quarters, and kind of recreation side of the ship. And then this side over here is going to be mirrored, and it's going to be where all of our production facilities and things are, like stuff like creating tools and making blocks and, you know, building assembly line plates and things of that nature. But that's kind of the vision that I have in my head. Unfortunately, it's sleepy, sleepy nighttime. In this game, you definitely want to make bedrooms. If you don't, you're going to have a really bad time. Uh, the learning curve on this game is a little bit different from something you might expect from RimWorld. Like, yes, in RimWorld, you want people to have their own private rooms, but it's not, like, mandatory. You can float for a little while having people share, like, an area. In this game, uh, you are going to take massive penalties if your bedroom is anywhere near the work areas. And so, like, you really want to have them in a separate bedroom ASAP, like, as soon as you can. 
I think we're not going to have enough storage to bring all this stuff on board. So unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to build another storage dock too. I don't really want to, but I think it's going to have to happen. And I think, honestly, the only great place we have for it is, like, right there. Uh, you do want to put in floor lighting, by the way. The lighting in here is customized. Like, the floor plan is customized. You start out basically with a square at the beginning of this game. And the tutorial will teach you how to get airborne and how to get, like, flying around in the hyper lanes. But other than that, it's entirely sandboxy, which is one thing I really, really like about it. Uh, I, I like the fact that every time I play this game, the goal is ultimately the same as RimWorld, where, like, you're just trying to last as long as possible, uh, despite bad things happening. Uh, but I like that I, I get to play around and build a new a, a new hull like every single time I play the game. It, it scratches the old creativity. So as you can see over here, the teardown process is underway. One of our pods is actually back up underneath there. You'll see him fly away in a minute. He's tearing down the walls. Once he gets all the outside hull tear down, uh, they're going to bring that back and it'll basically be hull scrap. And then we'll put the hull scrap into the recycler and it will make us hull blocks so that we can actually make the ship a little bit bigger. So off goes our little pod right there. And honestly, I cannot express to you how much I like the sprites in this game. They've just done a magnificent job with the visual presentation of the title in making it just absolutely drip with charm. Like, it's a very, very charming game to look at. Like, sometimes I find myself just zoning out, even when I shouldn't, and just kind of marveling at, like, just how pixel-perfect a lot of these little tiles are and how much effort went into the pixel art for the sprites. And I think they tightened it up recently, as I said earlier. I don't remember the blocks and whatnot actually looking this crisp and high definition, but that may just be my memory failing me. So the stripping process is going pretty well. It's been two or three days, actually. And I think we've got it knocked down into manageable chunks. Our food supply seems to be holding. And everything seems to be okay. Thank God for the big giant, uh, the big giant farm that we've got running over here. It looks like we got a harvest and we've got a second one on the way. And so honestly, I think with one more of these big old tubs for harvesting, we should have our food at least taken care of so that we don't have to eat algae all the time. People get grumpy when you feed them nothing but algae all the time, man. There's something about swamp sludge that really sets people ill at ease. But I did want to give you a progress support. It looks like they've torn down a lot of the main machinery. They've knocked out a lot of the main walls. We've still got, like, some tables and chairs and things of that nature that we need to tear down in order to get some soft blocks. But I think it'll be okay. This could be exactly kind of the refill on resources that I needed in this playthrough. Another ship has arrived in the system as well. One of the cool things about this game is that ships will filter in and out of systems just like naturally and natively all by themselves. And like you learn to recognize some of these ships and you actually build up a rapport and a little bit of a relationship with them that'll give you like trading bonuses and things of that nature with their faction. And since it's a post-apocalyptic universe, it can actually be kind of comforting seeing those guys around. Uh, I would like to set up a hail in just a minute, but yeah, due to it being post-apocalyptic, I imagine it's pretty lonely. And so I like to assume that these little ships are like following me around being like, hey, another human, let's be friends. And ultimately this game does expect you to do a lot of trading. like you're going to have to trade in order to make it from time to time because derelicts are not going to supply like supply you with all the things that you're ultimately going to need but it's kind of cool recognizing all the ships uh, let's go ahead and hail these guys yeah let's go ahead and hail them they're not open to hails right now oh my operations is offline okay well let's go ahead and adjust the system's readiness level then i would like for operations Oh, it's just waiting for somebody to go to the console. Okay. It'll be fine. What we'll do is we'll send somebody over here to deal with the operations right now. Oh, they're all on break time at the moment. This ship showed up at a bad time. Like, this ship showed up right about the time that everybody went on their, uh, their union-mandated post-apocalyptic space break. And so anyways, hopefully somebody will go to the console in just a minute before they go to bed, but no guarantees. Yeah, this game has pretty rigid schedules, so what you'll find is that the AI functions very, very differently in this game than something from, like, RimWorld. Uh, it, it, you can override people and force them to do certain things at certain times, and you can go through and kind of, like, get it done, but it's not quite as easy as in RimWorld as where you just, like, click on somebody and then right-click on what you want them to interact with. And, in fact, I do think this game would... So, I... It's hard to talk about colony survival games because RimWorld sucks all the oxygen out of the room. Like, it's such a refined, well-designed game with such an amazing UI and, like, an AI architecture that, like, 
it's difficult to discuss any other game in the same genre without constantly referencing RimWorld. And what I've noticed when I do that is people are like, well, why don't you just go play RimWorld? And I'm like, well, I don't want to play RimWorld. That's why. I like this game. But what I'm saying here is that there are things that this game could incorporate from RimWorld. Like, I don't think there's any shame in basically emulating the UI and AI aspects of RimWorld because Tynan has done a great job effectively making what is one of the most perfect games ever made. And so, like, in that situation, I don't think there's any shame in it. Uh, if you're going to play this game, you're going to have to learn the AI quirks and you're going to have to learn how it differs from RimWorld. Because if you come in with, like, an expectation that your guys are going to do exactly what they would do in RimWorld, you're going to be disappointed. Like, sometimes you're going to bump your elbows on the AI and get a little bit frustrated until you realize there's nothing wrong with the AI in this game. They just function very differently from the RimWorld AI. Uh, so this game adheres to schedules. So, like, with the scheduling, what you'll find is it's got the same scheduling system that RimWorld does, but, like, in RimWorld, there are critical tasks. So, like, if someone is wounded, it doesn't matter if they're scheduled for sleep. It doesn't matter if they're scheduled for free time. It doesn't matter if they're scheduled for work. What they will do is they will go to a med bed and they will get healed no matter what. If they're hungry, it doesn't matter what they're scheduled to do. They'll go eat. Like, there are basically things that supersede the scheduling no matter what. In this game, the scheduling is rigid. They will never eat outside of free time. They will never work outside of work time. Uh, you know, they will they will never do other tasks if they, like, wake up early and they don't need to sleep anymore. It doesn't really matter. They'll just kind of, like, hang out until sleep time is over, and then they'll resume the next task. And that's kind of what I mean, is that it takes a bit of time to sort of get used to the way that everything functions. And, like, they've minimized right here, if you look at the scheduling, or I guess the priorities for each character, what you will notice is... They don't have, like, they don't have self-care in here. They don't have, like, rest in here. Uh, just in case those things are more pivotal than any of the other jobs that they have. And so sometimes it can just lead to situations where, like, you really need somebody to go to a med bed. That, but for whatever reason, they just, like, refuse to do it. And they kind of just, like, bleed out on the floor. And so anyways, there are ways to work around that and, like, force them to do it. But you've got to kind of learn the paths that make that happen. Otherwise, you know, the first time it happens, it's probably going to be a little bit catastrophic. Hey, there we go. Our hail finally went through. You are speaking to the military alliance. Uh, so they do not share our vision. They will not allow us to visit their ship. We are weaker than they are. But we are allowed to trade. So, like, honestly, I think we should take a look real fast. And let's, like, slow the game down for a second while we do that. Uh, so if we open up a trade right here, what kind of stuff do they have available? Well, they have money. I mean, that's good. Uh, money is always a nice liquid form of making life easier. I'll probably trade them some of my crystals right here because I have a lot of them. And I don't really need them. I'll hold on to my chemicals for right now. I don't know if there's any blocks that I have like way too many of at the moment. But that gets us a smooth 480 bucks. Hey, those two pistols are still there. The last time I met these guys, I traded them those pistols right there. Uh, instead, I would like to take some of their tech blocks maybe. Tech blocks are really, really important, so I think I'll take some of their tech blocks and trade, and we'll just kind of do that right there. And so the trade will be taken care of. They'll just automatically do it. Uh, what we need to do after we do that, though, is we need to put the operations console back on standby. So there we go. We should get some bonus reputation from orchestrating the trade with these guys. But once again, I'm going to let it run until we tear down this derelict so you guys can see what warp travel looks like, and you guys can see what the rest of the universe looks like. Okay, and I think we've torn out just about everything we possibly can. I mean, there's probably some scraps left. Yeah, there's a little bit of hull scrap left, and there's a little bit of infra scrap left. But, like, honestly, I feel like we're not in bad shape. I've been calling those things tech blocks. Those are infra blocks. Well, we needed more infra blocks, okay? You always need more infra blocks. It looks like we've got about five more hull blocks coming on in that'll turn in. And then we've got work to do. But, yeah, everything looks good. It says there's still a little bit left over here. All right, so they're going to production tasks right now, so I think we're about done with salvaging. Uh, they're starting to convert some of the scrap over into actual buildable blocks, which I think is going to be really nice for us. It's going to be quite helpful. Uh, the only things left to do on this map right here are pretty much to go and mine out all the resource nodes. So we need to pick up the carbon, and we need to pick up the water, and that's pretty much it. So we'll kind of like double-click on this bad boy right here. We'll queue it up. And we'll send out the pods to go mine these little asteroids over here. 
and then that's pretty much like the flow of the game. Like, in all honesty, this is a much more laid-back game, in my opinion, than something like RimWorld. Uh, so, like, RimWorld, there's always some kind of, like, concurrent crisis that's taking place that you're actively having to manage and deal with. This game is a bit slower than that. This is a game that's got more in common with, like, Hard Space Shipbreakers, where, like, yes, there is combat. Yes, you will have to fight from time to time. Yes, you will have to defend yourself. Yes, you will have to build guns and things of that nature. But, by and large, this is a game that's mostly about scavenging the wreckage of a destroyed universe and trying to figure out what happened. Oh, the chip the pain is back, huh? You guys have returned. Hello. It's good to see you. I don't know if our previous trade ever actually, like, went through, in all honesty. Like, they kind of left the system pretty quickly after we set up that last trade. So I don't know if it happened or not. Like, I, I'm not super sure on that front. If so, it'll probably happen now. As you can see, they're scooping up all the carbon that's available on this side. The carbon's important because we need that once we get to advanced manufacturing. Oh, cool, we've unlocked the weapons console, and we've unlocked auto turrets. Very nice. Okay, I've got my research queued up, so we should be researching shields next. And then after that, I think we're researching robots, which is a new addition to the game, uh, where the robots will handle logistic tasks so that it'll free everybody else up for other more important work, basically. One thing I think we do need on board the ship is going to be a composter. I think we're just not going to be able to work our way around it. And while I don't really have any equitable space for the composter right now, we're going to need one. And so I'm going to put the composter in over there. That's going to allow us to convert water and to convert biomatter, which is this material right here, into fertilizer, uh, which will allow us to keep our farm going because our farm is actually looking a little bit rickety right now. And so before we get rickety wrecked, I kind of want to check myself. Uh, we've gotten all the resources off this map from what I can tell. It says there's a medium amount of hull scrap left, which surprises me because just a minute ago it said none. And so I don't, I don't really know where to go with that one right there. But once we've got the composter up and running, we're getting a little bit low on fertilizer. And so that should keep our farm moving. We are getting a little bit low on food at the moment, which means that everybody's going to have to eat algae. And boy, do they hate eating algae. So we've kind of reached the end of what we have to offer our little space pilots. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're tearing out some more hole blocks over here. Very nice. Glad to see it. And now it's back down to low. Okay. So I think certain things are not freed up until you actively take, like, the little bits and pieces off the walls and, like, the little decorative things off little areas. And so I think that's what happened right there. With the composter, we do want to compost things. I would recommend that we... Start composting this stuff over here. Let's say that maybe we go after... So, like, it looks like we can compost just about anything, in all honesty. We don't really have any corpses or anything to compost. So I'll probably just compost the biomatter. And we'll say that if we have less than 10 of these products over here, we'll keep it going. That might be overdoing it a little bit but we'll see how it affects our overall biomatter because we need the biomatter in order to make algae. And so we're basically feeding our people their own turd at the moment, like while we're composting. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to retrofit the ship a little bit, but I think we should warp before we do that, just so you can see what the warping looks like. Uh, so we'll go ahead and prepare a warp jump. We'll go ahead and set that up, and somebody will go to the console, and they'll charge up this meter right here, and then we will tell them to warp jump away because there's not really a whole lot ready here. Like, we're kind of done. Like, we, we picked this thing clean. We were some really efficient space vultures in this video. Uh, so there's the jump right there. -na 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 -na. Off we go. Uh, we can go to the hyper lane and we can use warp fuel in order to go to this next system. I'm kind of going to go over here first, I think. And we'll see what's in this little corner over here. Nothing. Okay, so it's pretty much empty. Like, I've gotten just about everything I can out of this system. Uh, so what I would recommend is we jump over to here. There we go. Off, off, and away we go. We've arrived in our new system. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot here. We got water and a derelict over here, so I'll probably get after that. Let's go ahead and drop our warp. There's no pirates in system, but there are two derelicts to be salvaged. So we'll go ahead and drop out a warp real fast. 
And as we drop out of warp, we're going to have to pick a deployment spot inside this system. And I'll probably just nestle us nice and tight in between the derelict and in between the water. Uh, with Clint, we're going to draft him real fast. We're going to send him on over here to suit up, and we're going to check out this ship and see if it's anything to worry about or not. Let's go ahead and jump on board the shuttle. And the shuttle's been drafted. We're going to go in through that side breach right there. And the other thing, I think we need another farm. So what I'll do is let's go ahead and we're going to start modifying the hull a little bit because we do have hull blocks again, which is good. It's really, really good. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to expand this out a little bit over on this side just to give us like a little farming area, basically. Yeah. I think that something like that right there would be delightful. And so we'll go ahead and put that on in and finalize it. And hopefully that'll get done shortly as well. Clint has made his egress onto the alien ship. We'll go ahead and knock him on out. And let's go ahead and... Oh, there's bugs here. We got aliens. All right. Luckily, Clint is no stranger to the old shotgun magician ship. And it looks like we've actually got ourselves a data pad over here. And we've got a couple of useful information items as well. I'm going to have him hang out for a minute. Uh, he is going to possibly destroy some of the loot as we're dealing with the aliens, but I know better than to have him land actually, like, on the deck proper because the aliens will sense that and they'll come after you. Come on, Clint. What you got for me? Yeah, get get on over here. There you go. Fill them full of lead, baby. Where are these aliens at? Let them come and get some. Get some! There's one down. All right, refill your O2 real quick. Come on back. We did have an alien right there. Hey, we got him, and we recovered the corpse. This game doesn't have evidence. It does have, I can complete this sentence, I swear to God. It does have an XCOM-styled system where you can salvage the enemy bodies. And with the enemy bodies, you can do alien research. I know there's an alien in here. Where's he at? There he is. Okay, you stay right there, light him up, and let's get some exploration done. I think that's everything. Over here, it looks like we've got a loot node. It's just money laying on the ground loose. Now, there's another alien back here. Unfortunately, he now has been wounded. That's a little bit of a bummer. I would rather he not be wounded right now, but at a certain point, you got to dig all the aliens out of these little murder holes. Some people recommend that you never send one guy on board a derelict ship by himself, but, like, honestly, I just find it easier to manage. We'll refill our O2 off the airlock compressor real fast, and I'd like to finish exploring this ship. Oh, there's another one over there. I saw him. I done seen him. I done seen him with my eyes, boss. I done seen him. All right. Crack that door open. Move to that tile, another alien down. And I think this derelict should be done. I think that should be about everything. Well, don't close the bulkhead. You can go search it. Oh, they've got a medical bed in here. So this craft was actually, like, prepared for problems. All right, another enemy down, and we have now explored the area. Very nice. There's two data logs on here, in fact, and those data logs are important for figuring out what has happened in the universe. Uh, we'll go ahead and undraft him, and we'll undraft the craft. We'll take a look and see what goodies are on board. We've got some vegetables. It looks like we have two dead bodies on board. We've got an android, and we've got another android. Okay. If we had a salvage bench, we could actually process those guys for parts, but alas. Uh, we'll go ahead and select everything, and we'll bring it all on board. And I think that's good enough for now. I don't want to kick off any major salvage operations until things get a little bit better. We also need to build some walls over here uh, just to make this area a little bit more sealed off. So we'll take these X1 walls right here and we need to kind of like connect them so that they're still inside their own little space in this back area. Otherwise bad things are going to happen. We want them to sleep comfortably, especially Clint. He just went through a trauma. He just got he just got chewed on by giant space bugs the size of a Volkswagen. And sometimes it takes a little bit for something like that to dust off the old psyche. 
food is a little limited right now, so we are going to be eating algae, which is kind of a bummer. I'd rather not. Your guys do have nutritional deficiencies, so, like, the foods that they eat actually provide them with, like, proteins and carbohydrates and fats and things of that nature. Oh, yeah, there's our dead guy right there. I wonder if the dead guy affects people's moods by being on board. I mean, I'm not against collecting alien bodies in the off chance I end up needing them. And what I'd like to do now is we need to have another grow bed over on this side. I wanted, like, another big old beefer of a grow bed. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to fit very well. I think I may have to take this out by one more tile. I'm against the idea. I think it's going to ruin the aesthetic. But for efficiency's sake, I think it's going to have to happen. We'll go ahead and expand the ship out a little bit. We've still got plenty of blocks left, and so I think we've got a lot of really good buildy boy opportunities in front of us. And I'll probably just set these guys up over here to salvage this ship and get it going. But that's the basics of uh, Space Haven. I hope you guys liked it. I think this game is really cool and it's really relaxed. It's come a long way since the first time that I covered it. Really the only problem that I've discovered with the game, I've had like zero bugs, I've had zero issues, it's all been smooth and polished so far. Uh, the game is a little bit quiet and so I think for some people they're going to get bored. I think that's the first front is that if you come in this game like expecting it to be full pulse pounding action the entire time that you're playing, I think you're going to have a bad time. Uh, because this is not that game. However, if you enjoy quiet space salvaging and just dealing with issues as they arise and frequently and getting into the occasional kind of shootout uh, with enemies and things of that nature, I think you'll have a good time with it. The one big thing is that like you're going to have to get used to the queuing system in this game and the way that things function, basically. Uh, that's going to be a big part of it, is that you're going to run into kind of like these occasional situations... I don't think we have the fertilizer to support this, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, anyways, you're going to run into kind of just the AI not being bad, but the AI functioning differently from a lot of other colony survival games. And so, like, it's going to have a bit of a learning curve as you figure out how they behave when compared to a game like Odd Realm or a game like Keeper RL or a game like RimWorld. And so if you come in with, like, kind of these preconceived notions about how the AI should function... Uh, that's that's really where you're going to run into some problems long term. Like, you've really got to, like, learn to love this game and figure out how stuff functions to resolve, like, interpersonal crises and, like, job scheduling issues that come up. And that can be a little bit frustrating if you think it's going to function like other games. What I would recommend is definitely take a look at, like, some uh, tutorials, take a look at, like, some playthroughs, and, and sort of, like, pay attention to the way other people are dealing with the game and how it can kind of go wrong. And at that point, I feel like you'll be able to kind of get yourself moving with the beast that is, like, star or Space Haven. Uh, but anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of ind uh, indie games every single day so you don't have to. I appreciate you all stopping by and having a good time with me here today. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But up until then, it's time for me to bid you adieu. I'll see you later, everybody. Thanks for hanging out.